At Granger, we're for the ones who specialize in saving the day and for the ones who've mastered the art of keeping business moving. We offer industrial grade supplies for every industry with same day pickup and next day delivery on most orders, all backed by real people ready to help. So you can get the right answers and products right when you need them. Call, click Granger.com or just stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast, your go to source for personal, professional, and organizational growth and development. We hope you tune in often for all things people management, organizational development and change, organizational leadership, and social impact related. Maximize your personal and organizational potential with Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. In this HBR Minute HCI podcast episode, I explore the recent HBR video, How to Build and Repair Trust at Work. Welcome back to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. It's great to be with you again today for this HBR Minute HCI podcast episode. Today I'll be exploring the recent HBR video, How to Build and Repair Trust at Work. In a world of hybrid offices and remote teams, trust among your work colleagues is more difficult than ever, but just as important. How do you build that trust, and how do you repair it when it breaks? Innovation editor Christine Liu talks with Tyree Mitchell, assistant professor at Louisiana State University, about the building blocks of trust, how to embed it in your work culture, and what to do when it breaks down. Thanks for joining me, and I'll catch you on the flip side of this first clip. Do I trust my team? Does my team trust me? Do I trust myself? My absolute favorite part of work is team collaboration. But now in a world of hybrid offices and remote colleagues, you have to rely on others, mostly sight unseen, to get things done. You want to hold people accountable without micromanaging. Ugh, all this boils down to trust. I have three big questions. What are the essential ingredients for building trust on a team? How do I build trust on a team or with anyone at work, really? And how do I regain trust if I've lost it? Trust can be a tricky thing in any team, in any organization. And even when we're together face to face, it can be a really challenging thing to develop, maintain, and even repair trust when it breaks down. I think this is even harder When you have a distributed workforce, when you have remote teams who don't actually ever interact in person, they don't know each other from direct interactions, only when they're working together on a project, perhaps connecting on a virtual meeting. So I agree with Christine Liu that ultimately we need to be asking ourselves these questions about how we can develop and maintain better, more trusting relationships, uh, particularly in a remote and distributed workforce kind of an environment. And what can we do to repair them when they break down? Because inevitably, we will fail at times to deliver what we say we're going to do. We will make mistakes. We will perhaps even inadvertently, hopefully, embarrass those on our teams or in some way undermine them or make, or perhaps even if it's just their perception, but they feel like we've undermined them. Ultimately, all those things can break down trust and ultimately that will derail the efforts of a team and the, our ability to work together collaboratively and to innovate and bring about new creative solutions for our organization and for our customers. So in the coming clips, she'll be laying out some of these, uh, the answers to these different questions and ultimately what can we do to better develop trust? Trust, which is the willingness to be vulnerable and have confident expectations of of how somebody's going to act in a team, is really important. That's Tyree Mitchell. He's a professor at Louisiana State University, and his research focuses on leadership and trust within teams. Can you help me break down exactly what are the building blocks of trust? 
There's classic research that shows that there's three judgments that we typically make about whether someone is trustworthy, and it boils down to ability, benevolence, and integrity. When we say ability, we're saying, can they actually deliver? Can he or she do what they say they can do? Um, benevolence is this idea that you know someone's actually um, acting on your behalf for, for their common good and not having intentions to harm you. Uh, and then integrity is that there's some uh, assurance that they're adhering to a principle or code of conduct or values. How do you assess the answer to those questions in a non-annoying way, <laughs> right? You don't want to like check up with them every hour and be like, okay, are you good? You know, or is it like a feeling? Do you express something? How do you communicate this? I just want to make sure we're on the same page kind of thing. Sure. So uh, one common practical tool that is is used um, in a lot of teams is something called a team charter. You sit down and you say, well, here's our goal. Here's what we need to accomplish. What do we need to do or how do we need to actually interact to be able to do that? And so this is a discussion. And the power of it is that there's shared understanding and everyone is actually creating the norms for how it's going to get done. So I love the idea of a charter. It's just like plain as day, expectations laid out, and then everyone can weigh in and then sign off on it. It seems really helpful in particular with like a new team or if a bunch of people are coming together on a new project just to kind of like make it crystal clear. Ability, benevolence, and integrity. Those are really the building blocks on which trust is made. And obviously, that's a little overly simplistic. There's more to it than that. And if you start to dig into the academic research, you'll see that there's all sorts of more specific nuances that we need to think about in terms of developing trust. But but really starting with those three elements, uh, I, I think, are going to get us a really long way. And it starts with our credibility around our skill and our ability to perform, our ability to deliver on what we say we're going to do. If people don't trust in our expertise, they don't trust in our skills, our competencies and capabilities, we may be the nicest person in the world. They may know that we have good intentions. They may trust us as someone with integrity, but they won't trust us to get things done. And ultimately, we have to be able to to deliver and get things done when we're working with others and when they're counting on us. So number one, we have to be able to demonstrate our ability and we need to be able to deliver. Number two, we need to be able to show benevolence. We need to be able to show that we have good intentions, that we have uh, the good of our team, of our group, and of our colleagues in mind. Uh, in in a world that often is geared towards the self-serving, the self-interested, we, if we want to collaborate and and have others devote their time and energy towards our successes, we need to do the same, and we need to demonstrate that we're committing our time and resources to their successes. Ultimately, that de- develops a greater team trust and allows us to move together in a more positive way as a group and to develop better, more deep relationships. And ultimately we have to have integrity and people have to see that we're someone who's honest. That doesn't mean they're always going to agree with us or that they're always going to see our decisions as the same types of decisions they would make. And in fact, we may have moral disagreements and ethical disagreements, but integrity is more than just agreeing on moral principles or core values. It's it's about holding true to the values that you espouse and ultimately that others can see you have a framework for dealing with the world and that they can, with some reasonable assurance, predict how you're going to respond in certain situations and that when you say you're going to do something, that you'll actually do it. When we can have these three core elements in place uh, interpersonally with anyone we interact with, but particularly with our teams, uh, both in person and remote, then we're going to develop more stronger trust-based relationships. So aside from a charter, are there other things I can do to build trust on my team? So there's three practical tips that I would offer. First, I would say avoid making commitments that you can't keep. Uh, You definitely don't want to promise and then under deliver. Sounds like someone's going to have to learn how to say no at work. You want to own your mistakes. So we're human. We're going to make mistakes. Uh, If you do so, own it. Um, And I think the more that you blame others or you deflect it, uh, it's going to cause issues as it relates to trust. Mistakes? No. I don't make mistakes. Like, I kind of know what I'm... Oh, shoot. Do we have that on tape? The third thing is take an action that is not in your immediate best interest. Uh, So maybe you have a resource that you can share that can help another team member complete his or her part of, uh, you know, their task. 
that may not necessarily be an immediate benefit to you, um, but that helps to build trust uh, with them, knowing that you have their best interests at heart. I'm excited to announce the publication of my new book from HCI Press, The Alchemy of Truly Remarkable Leadership, Ordinary Everyday Actions That Produce Extraordinary Results. Consider how the nature of work has shifted over the past 50 years. With increased globalization, rapid technological advancement, and the shift in economic composition, the average job of today looks very different than the average job of 50 years ago. What will the jobs and organizations of tomorrow look like? Moreover, what does this all mean for organizational leaders? What are the core competencies and capabilities of organizations and their leadership that are prepared for continued disruption and geopolitical and socioeconomic shifts? Regardless of what the future holds, increasingly, leaders need to be socially minded, data driven, decisive, champions of talent, and disruptors of the traditional notions of leadership, teams, organizations, and work. The alchemy of truly remarkable leadership will help you to explore your own leadership competencies and capabilities and consider ways to apply and implement them into your workplace and personal life. So what are some best practices in establishing trust? Uh, In the last clip, actually, he talked about creating a charter, a team charter, a product project charter. This is a simple document that allows you to articulate and outline key responsibilities, uh, who's responsible for what within the team in in performance uh, in various aspects. It allows you to establish team and group norms, uh, accountability mechanisms and structures, uh, how you're going to communicate with each other, etc. It's a very simple thing. Uh, It can happen formally in a document at least it should happen informally through group discussion when you first form. And ultimately, it can it can pave the way for a lot of uh, good foundational success uh, for the organiz- for the team, rather, that will lead to success for the organization. And then in this clip, he gets into some additional points that I think are really, really valuable. We also need to learn how to underpromise and overdeliver. If we overpromise and underdeliver, underdeliver, people are going to be frustrated. They're going to have their expectations um, dashed, and ultimately, it's just way better to underpromise, overdeliver. Demonstrate repeatedly and consistently over time that you're someone who always over delivers on the commitments that you make. And when you do that, trust will build. People will see you as someone who is very capable with a high level of ability and skill that ultimately you can get done what you say you're going to get done. And as we talked about in the last clip, ultimately that's that first real uh, component to building trust is that you demonstrate your ability over time. You also want to be able to own up to the mistakes that you make. And so if something does happen, don't point fingers, don't try to pass the blame, but just admit, yeah, man, I'm sorry, I I messed that up. How can we fix it? What can I do? Uh, And and just own up to it. When you do that, people see you as, as more trustworthy. Everyone makes mistakes. Everyone knows that everyone makes mistakes. And people can see through it when you try to to pass blame or when you try to feign ignorance about uh, something that happened. Ultimately, that erodes trust more than admitting to your mistake. Now, if you're constantly making big mistakes over and over and over again, yes, that will erode trust because that erodes that component of your ability and uh, your your capacity to get things done. But in terms of being trustworthy, you know that people believe you when you say you're going to do something. That people believe you when you're when you are honest and own up to things. That will hold true. And so just. Obviously, you don't want to make more mistakes than necessary. Own up to the mistakes that you make and ultimately support others when those mistakes are made. And then finally, do things that are in the interest of other people on your team. If you're only ever doing things that are in your own best interest, in your own self-interest, then people will see you as self-serving. But when you can spend the time to help others on your team and in your group to accomplish their tasks, they'll see that you're committed to the group. They'll see that you are devoted to the collective output, and ultimately that will help you to develop and maintain stronger trust in your team. What happens if you just like 
mess up. Like that trust may not be there. Like you missed a deadline or you accidentally embarrass someone. Like how do you rebuild that trust? If I promise to do something um, and didn't do it or, or worse, um, I did something that could potentially uh, be to the detriment of the team. If I truly want to try to repair that trust, um, one thing that I can offer on my behalf voluntarily you know, is open monitoring um, of, of exactly what I'm doing. It's like, I screwed up. I let you guys down. I betrayed your trust. Um, actually giving them access to whatever it is that, it's, that I still need to do moving forward. Being able to provide those structural solutions voluntarily can really make a difference. So when you make a mistake, when you erode trust, how do you start to rebuild it? And this builds builds off of the last um, clip where we were talking about how to sustain and, and maintain that trust over time. But you have to own up to your mistakes. If you make a mistake that's going to erode trust, you you have to start by owning it. Own it first, take full responsibility, and then open up and be more transparent with your team. Uh, because ultimately, I think most people want to trust those around them. They want to give them the benefit of the doubt. And if you overall have been a good performer on the team and you just make a mistake, you make a misstep, I think repairing that trust is is a relatively easy thing as long as you don't try to hide things, as long as you are open and transparent and will allow them access to what you've been doing. Uh, the more mistakes you make, the more trust that you erode, the more concerted and consistent effort over time that you're going to have to put into uh, developing that uh, trust again and rebuilding it over time. When trust erodes, the onus is on you to rebuild it. You can't just expect your team to automatically uh, have trust in you again. It's one thing for them to forgive you for the mistake, but it's another thing altogether for them to be able to trust you again, especially if the mistake was really detrimental to the team. So own it, be more transparent, be open with them, uh, and allow for oversight uh, while they rebuild their trust in you. So here's the recipe for trust. Ability plus benevolence plus integrity. And thanks to Tyree, I have some steps for how to build trust. Don't overpromise and underdeliver. Definitely own up to mistakes that you have made and help others even when you have nothing to gain. If you're a watcher of this series, you know that there's always a practice montage and then I show before and after and like, woo, this transformation. But trust is kind of tricky and involves people and involves vulnerability. Shockingly, actually monitoring and filming and possibly showcasing to a wide internet audience is not the best way to establish or maintain said trust. You may need to trust me on this, that I'm actually working on it, but just not for the camera. So this last clip uh, of this video just summarizes and outlines those key points again. So I'm not going to reiterate them again as well, uh, but only to hit home the importance of trust overall. If we want to be successful in our professional lives, we have to develop trust. If we want to develop um, our leadership capacity, we have to develop trust. We have to build relationships with those around us. Trust is the bedrock upon which those relationships are built. And so whether it's friendships, whether it's romantic relationships, whether it's workplace relationships with our colleagues, we have to develop trust. It's hard to build trust over time. It's much easier to erode trust. So we have to be intentional. We have to uh, continue to focus on those relationships. We always need to make sure that we keep in mind how others are perceiving our interactions with them. Not that we always have to make everyone happy about our decisions and our choices, but we have to treat people with dignity and respect. We have to honor their time. We have to value their inputs. And ultimately, we have to do what we say we're going to do. And we have to show others that we care about them genuinely and sincerely. When we can do that over time, ultimately, we will be able to develop meaningful relationships of trust with those around us, including people on our teams, including people uh, on our remote teams. I really appreciate this video. I think uh, they lay out some really great, important principles, some core uh, principles and tips on how we can develop and maintain and sustain trust over time. I hope that you'll consider how you're doing this within your teams, within your organizations, and I'm sure we all have some areas that we can work on. 
Thanks for joining me for this episode of the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. As always, I hope you stay healthy and safe, that you can find meaning and purpose at work each and every day, and I hope you have a great week. We are excited about the launch of HCI's new magazine, Human Capital Leadership. Human Capital Leadership is a free, interactive e-magazine designed to help individuals, leaders, and organizations find innovative approaches to maximize their human capital potential. We will be publishing issues quarterly in August, November, February, and May. Check out the first issue and let us know what you think. Thanks again for joining us for this episode of the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. I hope you stay healthy and safe and that you have a great week. Check out our new weekly LinkedIn newsletter, Alchemizing Human Capital, exploring industry trends via original research and interviews with executives and thought leaders from across the globe. We look forward to having you join us.